even though this channel focuses mostly on manifesting specific people, manifesting exes back, manifesting relationships and relationship issues in general, I do try to listen to you and to listen to your questions, your comments, your emails. And one of the things that has popped up more frequently recently are questions about finances, questions about wealth, questions about money. And it seems that this is something that is really on people's minds right now. And perhaps that's because, you know, if we look around at the current circumstance in the world, it seems that across the board, we're having economic financial difficulties. People are less able to afford the basic services of life, groceries in general. I was just reading an article recently about how vegan meat, that beyond meat stuff is, you know, their profits are way down because people are going back to buying cheaper animal proteins because they just can't, can't afford these things at the moment. Or they feel they can't afford these things at the moment. So I've taken this opportunity to make a video regarding a question from a viewer who left a comment a while back. Now this comment is a couple of months old, but I find that this is a good question, a good comment to discuss because again, this is on people's minds right now. So hopefully this can help people in general with their financial questions, their wealth creation questions in regards to manifesting using the law of attraction in order to do that. And before I get into that, if you have arrived at this video or at this podcast episode, it's going to be featured in both arenas as a YouTube video and as a podcast video. If you've clicked on this, then please also take a moment to subscribe if you haven't done so already. It's a simple click down below and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when I upload new content. Also, if you listen to the end of this recording, this video, I will give you a very powerful technique to use to help you in your abundance manifesting journey. So make sure you listen to this entire recording to hear that. So let me read this comment for you. And the comment was left on a video I uploaded a couple of months ago called Wealth Mindset Principles That Work. And if you want to jump to that video, either before you continue here or after you finish this, I'm going to link to it down below in the description box. And so you can do that from there. So the comment reads, I found a nickel on the ground today. And a couple of weeks ago, I found a $20 bill on the ground at the grocery store. I've also been finding all sorts of pennies, but I know there go those butts again. <laughs> and in regards to that, I have another video that I will link to regarding those nasty butts, B-U-T-S, and the video is called Watch Your Butts, and you'll find a link to that below as well. But to continue... I would love to see you do a video on how to readjust your mindset after you face something shocking, like getting fired from a job suddenly after working more consciously at manifesting wealth and trying to be happy where you are. My husband got fired and I'm a contractor with no income at present. My employer is facing delays every time they try to put me on a new project. We are trying to remain positive, or at least I am. Hubby is feeling the pressure, and I'm not sure how to talk to him about manifesting. And your videos always put me in a better mood, too. Thank you, as always, for sharing your wisdom. Thank you so much for this comment and for that compliment. So let's dive into this. And, of course, what I'm going to say is that abundance is all around you all the time. This is an abundant universe we live in. And you've been wanting to manifest wealth. And finding all that money on the street means that you are on the right track. It means you are aligned. You at least have been aligned. You at least have been practicing alignment with that abundance. And the universe will always demonstrate just how abundant it really is. Just how much abundance is all around you at all times times and that you just have to tune yourself into it so of course we say that these things these signs as we call them are always 
exactly that. They are signposts to show you that you're on your path. They are signposts to show you if you're heading in the right direction or not. Just like if you're driving somewhere, you're driving from one city to another, you're on the road, you're on the highway, and of course you're going to follow the signs, right? This many more miles to there. Or you're heading in the right direction towards this destination. And so it is in life. Life is one big road with lots of signs. That's from a Bob Marley song. It comes to mind right now. But this is precisely the kind of thing that starts to happen when you begin to line up with what it is that you want. And what does that mean? It means you're thinking more about how you want things to be than you are about how things are. That's really all it is. You begin to feel and think the way you would if you were the person that had all the stuff that you want. In this case, wealth, money. So it's really just a, these are signposts telling you you're on the right track with this. Keep going the way you've been going. But also, look at all the abundance that's all around you. The universe is showing you that constantly. But then, of course, you have the issue of, well, I've been trying to create wealth. We've been trying to focus on this. So why is hubby losing his job? Being focused now as you are on manifesting wealth, this being your goal, is your job or your husband's job, are these really the best vehicles for doing that? Sometimes we want more wealth, but want to cling to the things that bring us security, or at least make us feel that we have security. Like jobs that may or may not be the best vehicles for building wealth or even expressing our true passions or value that we can bring to the world. And remember that money, it's just an exchange of value. That's all it is. You bring value to people, they exchange that value for money. It's just energy. It's the same as an energy exchange. It's just, it's coming through this vehicle of money. So as such, you know, sometimes we have to let go of one thing in order to manifest the new best thing for us. But if we cling too tightly to that old circumstance or that present circumstance, but we want change, and yet we don't want to really let go of the things that we may need to let go of in order to help move forward towards that change, then the universe will often do it for us. It will seem to cause things to happen to get us to move forward in the way that we need to because we're not doing it on our own. Even though it may seem difficult or shocking to us in the moment, if we're able to ride that out, then we will soon see the unfolding of the much better circumstance or manifestation that we prefer. And that's really what it comes down to. And so often this is the case in the story that you hear. I want wealth. I want to move forward doing this thing but I'm still in this job situation and it's not serving that purpose. It's not the best vehicle to move forward into that new version of my life and of myself. So we don't move. We don't, you know, we, we, then we seem to think that we're stuck. And so the universe says, well, they're not moving. So here's a little pat on the butt to get them to move forward. So people always say this, you know, I wanted something new, fresh, I wanted something to pay me more money. I want to create wealth. Why did I get fired from my job? Well, was your job really the best vehicle to do that? And if you look at it, you might be able to honestly answer yourself and say, no, it wasn't. But I wasn't about to switch jobs. I wasn't about to quit that job in order to do the thing that I want to be doing, which can feel risky and scary. Change always does to us, you see. Our monkey minds want to protect us from change because they think change is dangerous, potentially. And of course, our higher mind knows better, but our monkey mind is just trying to do its job, which is to protect us from what it sees as potential danger. And so we have this conflict that goes on. We want this thing, but we're too scared to go for it. We want this new life, but we're too scared to let go of the old life in order to make room for the new life. But we have to do that in order to make room for the new life. And if we are wanting something for so long and putting so much energy and thought into it, we're ready to move forward and all the things that we want are lined up for us. The universe is lining it all up for us, but there's that little bit of a hook. And it's that we're not actually doing the thing we need to be doing in order to move forward. That's the action part. We have to sometimes just make an adjustment. Even if it's just a little adjustment to our daily habits, sometimes it takes a big adjustment. 
you see. So I want a new job, but I'm too scared to move forward with that. I want wealth, but it feels too risky, so I'm not letting go of the thing that I have right now, which may be in the way of that path. And so the universe gives us a little little slap on the butt to get us to move forward, and it may seem uncomfortable in the moment, it may seem shocking in the moment, how did this happen? But if we are able to write it out, we can we can write it out and get through that period pretty quickly, and then we start to see the opportunities line up to get us moving towards the destination that we have decided we would rather be in. So on the one hand here, you have been lining up with that because you're finding all this money and finding a $20 bill. Well, that's certainly more than a penny. But the universe is, is laying out the breadcrumbs for you. There you go. Here's a breadcrumb. Here's a breadcrumb. You're on the path. You're on the path. But you're kind of stuck too. You're not really moving forward. And so we're going to have to do something about that. And so that's what has happened. And so, of course, your question was, how do I then move through this period that seems so uncomfortable right now, so unpredictable right now? Because that's what's really going on. It's unpredictable. And that's what causes the discomfort, the anxiety. I don't know what's around the corner. I don't know what's coming. And, of course, our monkey minds like to know what's coming. But we have to become comfortable as deliberate creators. We have to learn to become comfortable with the unpredictable, with not quite knowing what's around the corner. Because, of course, we want to hang on so tightly to the how something will happen, when something will happen, so that we can feel secure about that, so that we can think, oh, I know it's coming. This is showing me that it's coming. I know it's around the corner, so I can feel comfortable about that right now. But this is just sort of not quite how things work in this physical environment. So with deliberate creation, we have to really learn to become comfortable with that, those unpredictable periods. And that's where the faith part comes in, you see. Right? That's a necessary part of the ingredient because otherwise we're going to be meddling in the process all the time or we're going to refuse to make the changes that are necessary to move forward so that the universe has to then intervene, call it a cosmic intervention that perhaps your husband lost his job. Because that was perhaps the thing that was going to just keep you guys exactly where you are, always pining for that thing that you desire, but not never quite getting there. So... I like to think of it that way, a cosmic intervention. But then how do we deal with these setbacks? How do we deal with this shocking, unpredictable, anxiety-inducing occurrence, event, circumstance? And I'm going to offer you some pointers on exactly how to do that right now. But before I do that, I'd like to point you, if you are watching this on the YouTube channel, to the merchandise shelf down below this video, you'll see a couple of neat little t-shirts, coffee mugs, things like that, that might interest you. We're going to add more to those, try to come up with some clever designs that are fun, will be fun for you to wear. If you also look in the description box, you'll find some links to some audio guided hypnosis, guided meditation audios that will be of benefit to you as well so take a moment and look at those please and if again you haven't subscribed yet please hit subscribe right now and hit that like button if you indeed do like this video so here is one of the great benefits to having things like this occur and one of the great benefits to having things like this occur when you suddenly find yourself in a period of I've lost my job. There's going to be some downtime going on here. And this is an opportunity for you to really, really get clear. Really use this period to reevaluate what you want now, who you've become now. There's nothing like a little downtime to do this. What are your passions? How can you add value to people's lives so that they will pay you in exchange? You list these things down. You gain clarity. When we have things like this happen in our lives. This is something that Abraham Hicks refers to as contrast. Contrast is as important to us in this physical reality as all the things that we want, all the good manifestations. Because the contrast offers us clarity, offers us opportunity also to figure out who we are now, who we've become, what is it we want now. And sometimes when we're still doing the same things over and over for years and years and we find ourselves not being terribly happy, which is why we reach out for more in the, in the first place, my assumption is that if you are wanting to create wealth, that this is not coming through your job right now or your husband's job. So there's something 
that needs to change. There's something that needs to shift. And one of the things that always needs to shift that usually is the fundamental thing that needs to shift in people's minds is their understanding of what it is they really want now. What does it mean to have wealth? Why do you want wealth? Make a list of reasons that you want wealth. What will you do with the money? How will it make you feel to have wealth? Is there a number on the wealth? Is it a million dollars? Is it $5 million? These are things that people don't often think about. They don't take the time to really sit down and gain that clarity and really work it out for themselves. And I don't think it's laziness, but I think that it's partly a little bit of anxiety. Well, what if it doesn't happen? And partly also that we're simply too busy doing the things that we don't prefer to be doing. So having this downtime, having this intervention happen to you is kind of is kind of a signal from the universe also in saying that look you're on the right track here you're getting to be on the right track and we're showing you you're starting to see all this abundance around you so there's a twenty dollar bill here and there's a coin here but you're not moving forward here so we're gonna we're gonna cause you we're gonna force you to slow down for a minute we're gonna force you to sit down and we're gonna force you to think about this for a minute because this is what you need to do is to gain some real clarity because i hear wealth just like when I hear I want my, my ex back. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean to have them back? What action or circumstance will then signal to you that now I have this back? Now I have this wealth. Now I have this circumstance. What is wealth? Is it a pile of money that you've accumulated? Is it assets? Is it property? What feeling is it that you're after? Most of the time people just... They say they want money, they say they want wealth, but what they really want is to never worry about making another purchase again. Is to never worry about money when they go shopping in the supermarket or wherever it is they go shopping every day. Whatever it is they spend money when they sit down to pay their bills and their rent, they don't want to have to worry about it. So usually that's what wealth means to most people. What you want is peace of mind. But if you see your peace of mind comes from you not from external circumstances. So if you suddenly were to win $250 million in the lottery, would that bring you the peace of mind that you're after? Or would you just continue on your pattern, pattern of worrying about not having enough? You see, and this is why we say, don't try to change the circumstances. You need to begin with the root of what it is that's really bothering you. You need to start looking inside and begin to change the perspective about these things, about wealth and about the other areas of your life. That's where things need to happen. And sometimes, yes, we have to stop doing the things we've been doing out there, the pushing, the wanting, the manipulating, whatever it is, the doing, doing, doing with seemingly few results. And just sit down, sit our butts down in a chair with a piece of paper or just to think about what does all this mean to me? What is it I really want here? And if money is an exchange of value, then you're giving something of value to people. But that always comes from a place of doing something you're passionate about, doing something that really gets you going, gets your juices flowing. But people are scared. People might say, I want to be a musician, but I'm going to keep my job at that as a data tech or whatever it is that's sucking my soul because, you know, I'm afraid to move forward towards that desire. And the universe goes, well, you've been holding this desire for a long time and nothing's going to change unless we give you a smack on the butt. So how about this company starts failing that you're working for? How about you get laid off? How about you lose your job? And now you're going to have to sit down and think about what can I do next? Now, it seems less risky to do the thing that you've been wanting to do than it does to do nothing. Or to look for another job that's going to make you miserable. Right? Or keep you in a dissatisfied place so this really is your opportunity to think about that to gain some real clarity so use this opportunity because it is a gift from the universe it has also been given to you as a tool right now having this time and this time to think about it is a tool that helps you get towards where you want to be and let's talk for a moment about wealth I mean wealth when we say wealth we think money, possessions, things. But really what we are talking about, of course, is abundance. What is defined as a very large quantity of something. The root 
apparently being Latin, abundant, overflowing, abundantia, overflowing, a very large quantity of something. So it could be money, it could be anything, but understand this, we live in an abundant universe. I mean, there is a very large quantity of the universe alone. You know, we went swimming the other day. It was very hot, 104 degrees. Well, closer to 110 degrees. We went to a nearby river and a swimming hole that we like to go to in the summertime. And I, I'm floating in the water there. I look over to my love and I say, you know, we are so abundant. And she looked at me and she said, yes, Papa Bear, we are. With that slight hint in her voice as if she were humored by this, as if to say, well, I know that already. Thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> but the point I was making is that abundance is all around us. It doesn't always have to come in the form of money. And the universe is demonstrating this to you, to me, to all of us, all the time, constantly. If we pay attention, it is constantly showing us how abundant we are. And so this brings me to a wonderful exercise that you can do to really retrain your mind into recognizing and seeing the abundance around you. Now, the person who wrote this comment, asked me this question, is already getting these signs, is already kind of seeing, well, I'm finding $20 bills here and there, but that is not the only form of abundance around us. You are swimming in abundance, literally. We were swimming in abundance the other day. <laughs> But if you were to sit down, even just in your home, even in your office, even wherever you might find yourself in public, but let's start with your home. You're sitting somewhere in your home and, and you take a few breaths and you just become a little quiet in yourself and you just look around at all the objects in your home. Look at, look at all the things that money brought you. Look at all the things that have money attached to them. Your television, your computer, your furniture, the food in your fridge and your cupboard, all the items in your house. They are all signs of your abundance. And this is a very, very simple exercise, but it's very powerful. And if you do something like this for a few minutes a day, you can see it all around you. Your car outside or in your driveway or on the street, the house or apartment that you live in, your city, look around your city. When you drive or walk around your city or your town, notice all the abundance everywhere. Money is everywhere. All the cars you see, all the bridges, all the roads, all the houses. It all took money to do that. Your phone, this device that I'm recording this on, this microphone, this desk that I'm sitting at. You see, those are all symbols and representations of abundance. And it is all, all the time, all the time, it is the universe letting you know constantly you are okay. You are okay and you're going to be okay. Everything is just fine. Everything is lining up just perfectly for you all the time. All you need to do is to teach yourself to become aware of it. And so when things like this happen, of course, it's normal to react with anxiety and shock and frustration, even anger. These are all normal emotions, normal responses. But of course, we don't want to swim around in that muck. We acknowledge those things. Oh, this really this is really shocking this is really scary all right we acknowledge that we sit with that feeling for a while but then we shift our awareness and we go well maybe that guy tarkon is right maybe this is exactly what needs to happen right now to get me to where i want to be and let's take stock for a moment let's take a moment and breathe and let's let's take the opportunity right now the time that i have now to really gain clarity on what it is i want to do where I want to be, how I want to feel, what, my, what I want my state to be, what is my preferred state of being. And also, let's take stock of what I already have. Right? We call this, in reality creation, appreciation or gratitude. 
Yes, it is that. But it's more than that. It's an awareness of understanding what is there already. That's all it is. Because if we are so busy, always worrying about the future, we're not able to look at what we have right now. The tools, the abundance that is available to us right now, the opportunities that are available to us right now, they could come up and smack us in the head. We wouldn't see them because we are, we've trained ourselves to worry about what's next, what's next, what's down the road, what's next. But see, the best way to really overcome that, the best way to move through that is to really take stock and say, let's stop for a moment. Let's bring ourselves back into the present moment and let's look at what's around us now. There is abundance everywhere. And right now in this moment, I'm okay. And you know, you cannot hold two opposing thoughts at once. It may seem that you can, but that's not really what's happening. You're bouncing back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Lack mindset, abundance mindset. Lack mindset, abundance mindset. So it seems like, because it's happening so quickly, that you're bopping back and forth in your thoughts. It seems like you are holding two opposing thoughts in your mind, but you're not. You really can't. You can't think of lack and then be aware of abundance. You can't be focused on abundance at the same time that you're then focusing on lack. So you want to replace, you want to become aware of that and you want to replace these ideas of lack, these thoughts of lack. You want to slow down that bopping around, that jumping from thought to thought, and you want to jump more and more to those thoughts of abundance. And so meditating is a wonderful tool, but of course meditating is just focusing on something. It's bringing in your focus. So this is one form of meditation is to just sit and breathe and look at all the abundance that is around you now. And yes, you can call that wealth as well. You have wealth now. You have it. Even if you're able to just get in a car or, or, or drive somewhere nearby and go jump in a river on a hot day, you are abundant. You are wealthy. And the more you do that, the more you think along those lines, the more you will be able to recognize the opportunities that are already all around you all the time. You can't see them if you're coming from a place of lack and worry. So it has to be, the first step has to be to calm yourself down and to do the, make the adjustments internally before you can perceive the external abundance. You have to become aware of your internal abundance, your abundance internally. And that is really fundamentally the best way to move forward through times like this. Thank you so much for that comment. Thank you so much for listening. If you do like this video, I'd like to remind you again, there's a subscribe button and a like button and a notification button that you can hit right now. If you want some coaching with me, you can find out about that. There's a link down below in the description box. It's manifestation dot, excuse me, manifestationlab.com forward slash services. And until next time, I am Tarkon. Thank you so much for listening. I wish you all the best and happy manifesting.